Hello, and welcome to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and this is our first lesson, woohoo, our first coding lesson. There was an introduction, uh, an introduction lesson, we'll call it Lesson Zero, so make sure you see that. Uh, now, here we are at the Zim site, zimjs.com, and we should set up the environment in which we're going to code. So that means our editor. Now, you may have an editor that you like, and that's great, uh, but you may want to see what we're using, or maybe you don't have an editor of choice yet. So, to find it, we can go to the Zim site, zimjs.com, and press on Learn. That's one one place. Scroll on down here and under tools you'll see the editors that we recommend. And these all have color syntaxing and that helps us with code. And we're going to use Atom. So I press on Atom and here's where you can download Atom. So I would suggest you do that if you haven't downloaded Atom. It's, it's small and free and uh, fun. It's made by GitHub. GitHub is a, a large, very popular repository for sharing code and uh, keeping versions of code. It's been recently bought by Microsoft. So uh, grab GitHub, uh, not GitHub, <laughs> grab Adam <laughs> from GitHub, and uh, you can download that. Pause the video if you want. I'm going to go back into, well, I'm going to open up Adam now. So we'll close that and open up Adam. Here it is. Uh, you'll get a lot of welcome messages, and you are welcome to close those welcome messages. Uh, there's a little checkbox saying don't show again as well. You might want to do that. And then there were some packages that I would recommend you put into your editor as well. These, these help you do things. So if I click on Packages, and then Settings View, there's a way to install and manage packages. I'm going to open that up. Here's where you can change things to do with your editor, things like your tab size. Setting the tab size actually might be a good idea as well. Under your editor, if you scroll way on down, I've got it set to four. For some reason, Adam defaults to two, and that's too small. If you're learning how to code, you want your tab, you want to be able to see your indenting. Indenting is one of the most important things that you can do as you're learning to code. So under Editor, I've increased my tab to 4. You might even try 6, but 4 is probably good. Now, under Install, these are the packages we were mentioning. Look up Browser. This will uh, help us launch things in browsers. With our code, we code in a text editor, Adam here. And then we show the results in a web browser. Now, obviously, you have browsers already but uh, this will allow you to connect up those quite easily. There's two of them. One is uh, open in browser. That will, if you install that, that will allow you to use a hotkey or a menu to open up the current page in your existing browser. And that's good to have. That's how I work. There's also Browser Plus. And Browser Plus, when I'm teaching, Browser Plus is perhaps a little easier. Uh, browser Plus will open up a browser right in Atom for you, so you have your code on one side and a browser on the other. So you should get both of those plugins. And you've probably been hitting the install now on those, and they should have installed already. They're quite quick. Okay, I'm closing settings now. We've got our tab set. We've got our, our um, what are they called? Packages? Plugins, packages, whatever. <laughs> whatever. So uh, now we want to work in a new file. Now you're probably trying to get it until you see something that most likely says untitled. And then you want to file, save as, and then save it as um, lesson01.html. I would make a creative coding folder. So I have a creative coding folder. And as you save that file, you can make the folder too. And then we have lesson01.html saved in there. And that's where we're at. Now, I can see my files by rolling over the left-hand side. And here's uh, the various files. This is my local files here. And I could find the folder that I'm in somewhere in here. <laughs> creative coding. There it is, creative coding with lesson01. Sorry, that's going to be small for you. But anyway, um, you may not have this side, so perhaps you have to go File, Add Project Folder. And that's the way Adam lets you choose folders to show over here on the left-hand side. You could have several folders open at the same time. I work in one folder called Zip. Okay, so you can close that back down. 
here is our HTML page. Now if you've called it HTML, you can type in HTML like that. And as soon as you get a little tip like this, you can hit enter or you can press it with your, your mouse. So there we go. That makes a whole bunch of HTML code for us. But we're not here to make HTML, so instead of typing it all ourselves, we're going to copy it from a template. All right, so let's get rid of that. Save that up so we are back to an empty page. Head on back to the Zim site, and here under Setup is Copy the Template from Code, or you can get the zip file, or a, there's a frame page. It shows us different types of templates. We're going to use the basic fit template here. So that's available in the code page. Or indeed, you don't have to come into the learn section each time. If you were back in the front of Zim, you can go right to the code page here. It's uh, highlighted in blue for us. So we have to go there to get our template quite often. And we hit copy. So that copies our template. The code page also has other templates and a way to hook into animate, help areas, tools that we might use, bits on accessibility and a series of libraries of other code, and uh, so forth. But we've hit copy to copy our template. And now we reduce this. We come into Atom and we paste or control V paste. And this pastes our template into Atom. Now if you don't see the right colors there, then maybe you didn't save your page as .html and that way we know that uh, Atom knows to color syntax these. So one of the first things is the title is ZimFrame and it's a fit template and we'll see what that means. But we can just call this uh, Lesson 01. Woohoo! Now Zim is a JavaScript framework that will allow us to work on what's called the canvas. So you, if you want, you can call it Zim Lesson 1 and keep Zim there. It's up to you. Uh, or Creative Coding Lesson 1. <laughs> Whatever you want there. If we scroll down a bit, we can see that we're bringing in some code in script tags. We're bringing in a file called CreateJS and a file called Zim. CreateJS gives us, uh, helps us with the canvas. It's a library that helps us with the canvas. And Zim sits on top of that to give us more things like components and conveniences and controls. So we've imported those. We don't have to worry too much about them. They'll help us as we code on the canvas. Then we have a script tag. And indeed, when we're inside of HTML, that's where we would put our JavaScript, is inside of a script tag. So all of this stuff inside the script tag is JavaScript. Here's the end of the script tag. And then down below, just exploring the rest of our template, we have a meta tag that is saying what to do for our viewport. and that's uh, that helps us out on mobile say how we're going to scale and so forth uh, but also google won't even index your pages if you don't have a viewport these days so that's important to have we end our head so all that stuff was up in the head tag and then we come to our body this is normally where everything is seen on a page is in the body of the tag but we have a little message there that's a an html comment tag a little message there that says uh, the canvas with an ID of my canvas is made by ZimFrame. So really, we don't have to do anything down there at all. All the stuff that we're going to be doing is right here in this script tag. Now, it talks about our scaling. Uh, this, by the way, is a comment. You see how it's grayed out? So the double slashes mean the code will ignore this. And we can write anything we want in there. This is the JavaScript comment. Note that this is the HTML comment, a little bit uglier. That's the things nightmares are made from. <laughs> well, luckily, we are not out in HTML anymore. We're inside of our JavaScript, so we have a nice, easy comment. Scaling. What is scaling doing? So why don't we take a look at this uh, template so we can save it up. Now note that if we make a change, for instance, I just added a new line there, it shows a blue dot saying this has not been saved yet. 
So if, if I hit Control S, Control S for save, or indeed File, Save, wherever that is, I never use it because Control S is faster, then we know our file is saved and we'll see any changes. Right click and say Open in Browser, and it will open up in a real browser. So let's try that. Open in Browser. Hopefully you can see that there. You would have had to install the plugin. Let's reduce these browsers here. So there it is opened in my default browser and you can see what the fit mode is doing. It keeps our application. This white area or light area is called the stage. Is that fun? So whatever we want to see we have to put on the stage. And that's terminology that was left over a long time. Interactive media going way back to CD-ROMs when we were coding in director Macromedia Director, then came Flash, and we coded in Flash. Both those had stages, and we have a stage here on the canvas. So that's a stage. Or, indeed, it is the canvas tag that the stage is on. The darker color at the sides, that's just the HTML background. Now, one of the problems with a fit mode, it's, 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 it's good because you don't have to worry about dimensions. Zim will scale all of this for for you and when we code we just have to worry about the width of the stage and the height of the stage and they always stay the same. Then it gets scaled as the browser scales. So that's called a scale mode of fit. But imagine this were a mobile device, which it certainly could be, then all of a sudden we've wasted this room and that room. We can't get to it. It's, it's not being used. So in that case we'd want to go to a full mode so that we could make full use of a mobile screen. Then we have to scale things and position things dynamically ourselves, which is a little bit harder. So we'll just start in a fit mode. Uh, don't worry about that. So here we are starting in a fit mode. Now uh, what we're doing is we're specifying that the constant scaling is equal to fit. This is our first real look at code. What do these what, did this, what does this mean? Hopefully it reads fairly well, as in it just means we're not going to be changing scaling. Scaling will always be the string fit. So it's always going to be fit. That's what const means. Same with our width and our height. It's the only number that we're going to apply to width is or assign to width is uh, this number right here. And indeed, this equal sign is called the assignment operator. And code is made up of all of these little things. What, what is that? Semicolon. That's a, called the terminator. Ooh, does that sound fun? It just means that our statement is finished. So this is called a statement. And if you think of code as sort of like um, instructions, basically each line is like a new instruction doesn't have to be each line though. We could do this and say these two statements are on the same line and the computer will know that that's the case because each statement is terminated by a terminator <laughs> or a semicolon. It ends with a semicolon. Usually we try and keep it uh, each statement on on a line. That's how we usually do it. Okay so this uh, is turning purple. That's a keyword. That means it comes with the language. It's part of JavaScript. This white stuff means that we get to make it up. That's a name that, that we've made up. Scaling. We could have just called it s. Const s is equal to fit. Then later when we, when we use scaling, you'll see that we use it down here, it would have to be s there. Anyway, let's undo that. Control Z to undo. We're storing fit inside of scaling. Now what about this one? This is a little bit different. Doesn't that look different than fit? The difference is in Atom, by the way, I select that and I get the quotes. It will put quotes around both sides of that for us. So I select that and I put quotes. This isn't exactly what we want. This would be saying put the string 124 or 1024 into width. We really want the number, so I'm undo that. We want to put the number 1024 into width. They're slightly different. So a string is a string or uh, you know words and letters, that kind of stuff, or 
sometimes other symbols. But we can tell it's a string because it has these quotes around it. A number is, well, a number that we can add, and subtract, and multiply, and so forth. Now, what is light? Light isn't in quotes. If it's not in quotes and we're assigning it like that, so we're trying to put light into color, well, hmm, how come we didn't put quotes around it? It's because Zim has made light for us. Oh, Zim has made the light. And Zim has also made other colors, <laughs> like green, blue, pink, faint, and clear. So any of those, you don't have to put quotes around because Zim has said, hey, this is a constant called light. And what's inside that is actually an HTML color. So light is probably something like, quote, number sign. I think light is probably D, 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 D. All right, well, <laughs> welcome to code. That's real code for you, isn't it? That's code for the, uh, it's a hexadecimal code, um, which means it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. <laughs> F is uh, the lightest, so D is very close to F. F. D is quite light, but that's code for a color. Um, and so now you see why I don't necessarily want people to have to use this type of code for color. They can if they want, but I gave them nice, easy words for colors. And indeed, HTML also gives us words, and we could say pink. There. This is the HTML color pink, and we're storing it in color. Now, that wouldn't actually do anything, because all we're doing is putting the string pink into a variable called color. It only does something because later on, look down here, later on right here, we're using that color and passing it in to make a new frame. So then more things happen, like it all, it, oh, it's just like a whole bunch of little things will happen to make the following happen. Are you ready? We save this up, so I save that. I come back to my browser, right? Oh, this was a bad choice because we already have a pink ball, but they're gonna be a slightly different color pink. So we refresh here, and now this is the HTML color pink in the background. And this happens to be, coincidentally, this is the Zim color of pink. So note that they are two different colors, but we have indeed used code to change the background color of our stage. So if we wanted the Zim color of pink, then it would not have the quotes. It's a reference to what Zim has stored as its color pink, a <laughs> slightly different color. So we refresh here and guess what's gonna to happen to that ball? Where is the ball? It's actually there somewhere. Oh, it's in the middle because we refreshed. It's in the middle somewhere. We could drag it around, but we, we can't see it. <laughs> Why don't we try blue instead? <laughs> there we go. The Zim color of blue. We refresh here. And now you see we've made the outside blue. And here's our pink ball on the inside. All right. We're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, perhaps. But that's a little bit of how my teaching style is. I don't mind if we go slightly off in tangents. We're just trying to introduce some of the basics now of coding, but it's all right to see colors change, isn't it? You know, at least you see a change, right? So, uh, blue, what was it originally? Do you remember? I think it was just called light. And uh, Zim stores a couple different shades, and it's got light, it has lighter. Obviously it has white and black. It also has dark and darker. Mm. Indeed, this outer color, is dark. So the outer color is the way that we specify what the outer color of the stage is. So, well, actually not the stage. So here's the outer color. This is off stage and this is on stage. If we refresh here, we're back to our, our light. Okay, so we can also change the dimensions and you would be able to see that. For instance, if we said 768 here, that's both of these are 768. What would you expect to see? Indeed, a square. So now the stage is square and we waste even more space. <laughs> now, if you want, you can load Zim right onto an HTML page. If you're familiar with HTML, 
uh, you can put Zim into an HTML tag, and maybe then you want it square. You want a little square interactive logo or something. You can do that too. But for right now, we're working primarily in Zim. In other words, it's taking up the whole screen, <laughs> isn't it? Or the whole window anyway here. All right, so let's undo that control Z and we're back to 1024. Now another thing about these lessons, just a bit of a, a meta thought here, is we don't want to ramble on forever. We want to give you a sense of accomplishment and, and also a way that you can pause and say, I did two lessons today. <laughs> <laughs> feel good about it. If I ramble on for an hour and a half, <laughs> then you're not going to be able to do two lessons. So why don't we keep this lesson just an introduction to the template, all right, and getting us started. And then we'll stop this lesson and we can move on to another lesson. We don't really have uh, hard lesson numbers that we need to follow. We'll just kind of do it instead via time and how much I think your brains can take. How are your brains doing out there? Hopefully they're good. <laughs> this is all, all exciting, starting a new journey. Okay, so color, we talked about that. We uh, got some variables, or well, actually these are called constants. It's kind of a, an interesting time because we're, we're right at the time where we're changing over from JavaScript 5 to JavaScript 6. In JavaScript 5, these were called var variables. So it may be that you're familiar to some degree with JavaScript already and you're wanting to know more on how to create a code and you've seen vars all your life. <laughs> right. Uh, this used to be var scaling and var width and so forth. We didn't even have constants. The other one that we're going to see too is this thing called let. So now instead of vars we have const and we have let. So like I said, a bit of a tricky time to teach because it was actually probably easier to teach when we just had one thing, that being var. Now we've got three things. We have the old var and we have const and let. So going forward, we're almost going to try and ignore var. However, we will still say variable quite a lot just because it's our habit. Okay. Uh, how it works out is uh, vars, now we've split it up into either a constant or a let. If it changes, we use let. If it doesn't change, we use constant or const. So that seems pretty easy. Okay, scrolling down, here's our framework. As mentioned, we were going to try and see what's in the template, talk a little bit about it, and uh, then we will pause this lesson or stop this lesson and start anew. Okay, but we're still in our template. We've got a few things to look at, although this stuff right here is really what's in, inside the template. So uh, we won't really talk about that all that much. Let's just find out what this frame is. Dum, dum, dum. So a new frame. Well, that's fun. A frame or a framework is something, an environment that helps you code. It gives you a whole bunch of things that you're going to need to make your coding easier. The canvas itself was a rather low level, we'll call it. You had to do a lot of building to get anything done. A lot of building of scaffolding, of uh, uh, I don't know, parts that you might need. And CreateJS did a lot of that for us. So CreateJS came along and said, no, 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 you don't want to just use raw canvas. That uh, You could make a game of Pong and, and, you know, there you go, you've made Pong. And that actually happened. A lot of people looked at the canvas and it was supposed to kill Flash or, you know, like take over the Flash world. And they looked at the canvas and went, well, okay, there's not much there. And indeed, the canvas is really only one of the hundreds of things that Flash had. And Flash had something like the canvas 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so they came into the canvas and sort of said, oh, well, there's not much here, really. Uh, but that's okay. We built on that. So CreateJS built up on that and brought us back to hopefully close to where we were when we had Flash, but in a new modern environment, an open source modern environment in which we knew that we're going to be working on mobile. So we took care of things. And then CreateJS, or uh, Zim, came on and sat on top of CreateJS and gave us more conveniences and components, in which we're going to see, such as this framework. So this is a framework that helps handle scaling. 
but also many other things. It makes our canvas for us, blah, 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 blah. And here's what we need to do. We need to make a new frame. Then we pass information into that frame as we're making it. We give it all this information that we so carefully have created above. So we pass in the scaling. That's the scaling. So that will be just like fit. If we wanted to, we could have put the word fit here and it would have worked the same way. Then we would not need this. In Atom, you can go control slash. Control slash quickly makes a comment for you. Control slash, forward slash. So we would not need the scaling of fit because we put the answer, so to speak, right in there. So if we save this and open up here, whoop, it still fits. We changed the dimension type. So there it is still fitting. You see that? And we could have taken this number and put it right there. The only reason we really broke it up into these variables or constants, <laughs> there, there we go, these constants up here, is just to help you understand what we're putting in here. If you saw the number 1024 right here and the number 768 right there and light and dark, you may not know what these things were doing. So we did them in two steps. I guess we can do them in two steps. Up, up, there we go. Two steps where we declared them up here. This is called being declared. We declare a constant called scaling will be equal to fit. We are going to assign fit into the constant scaling. From now on, scaling will be fit. That's what we're doing. <laughs> We're making a declaration. And so now scaling, if we use it here, scaling is really fit. So variables is a form of what's called abstraction, but we don't need to go into that right now. But sometimes it's difficult for people to get used to this abstraction. And the more and the more and the more you code, the more you get used to abstraction until you become Dr. Abstract, like me. <laughs> I am Dr. Abstract. <laughs> So scaling is like a label in a sense. You can see that. And, and what we're putting in there is it's, it's almost like scaling a, a, a constant or a variable is like a container. And we're going to put fit into that container. So it holds this and the name of it is that. From then on, we can just use the name. All right, more on that later though. So our frame, we have passed in this as we make the new frame. Do you like that? And we make a new frame. And we're going to store a reference to that frame. So this is called an object. We've just made an object. And we're going to store that object in a constant called frame. The constant frame will always hold this frame I just made. <laughs> there we go. You could call it constant my frame if you wanted, if you don't like the fact that it had the same word there. Yeah, but then we would have to say my frame dot on and all, all this other. And here we have another reference to a frame and frame. We'd have to change all those as well. So we don't want to do that. So our constant frame holds this object. Now, an object is a very important thing, and we will continually, dis continually see objects as we learn coding. Objects are made from a thing called a class. A class is like the instructions for making objects. It's like, hmm, if you are making a cake, then you would make cake from a cake recipe. So the class is like the recipe. Here's, here's what goes in it and how to make it. That's the class. So a class has an uppercase letter. It's very important. It's not a real object. It's only the instructions on how to make them. It's, the, in a sense, the prototype. It's where does it come from? So we have instructions on how to make a frame. And the way that we make the frame object is by using the new keyword. So please give me a new frame. Now, this statement right here, or this, uh, What's the second side of a statement? It's called something. <laughs> expression. This is called an expression. <laughs> Don't worry so much about that. <laughs> Isn't it fun that these all these beautiful words that they use in code? So this is an expression. This expression evaluates to an object. 
In other words, new frame is a, is a frame object. And it is a frame object that will have all of these things, like it'll be these color and this size and the scaling, etc. We've now stored it in a variable. Finally, the last thing that I want to look at in today's lesson, like I said, I want to keep them short, <laughs> I may have failed already, is what we do when the frame is ready. When the frame is ready for us, when it's made, when it's uh, taken, when it's made that canvas tag, remember, because down here, look, no canvas tag, no canvas tag. It is made by ZimFrame. So when the frame makes the canvas tag and it creates the stage for us, and does anything else that it needs to do, fits it in the window. When it's ready, we get what's called an event. So it looks like this, frame dot on ready, do this stuff. So let's not worry so much about what all this means, the syntax for that, because that's a whole other lesson. But basically what this is saying is when the frame is ready, do all of the code that is between this bracket right here and this bracket right down here. You see how Adam, and Adam's nice for us. Look, you see how that's underlined in a little blue thing? Sorry, let me make that bigger. Can you see that okay? Underlined in a little blue thing. And if we scroll down, there's the second one. It got underlined in a little blue thing too. So all of the code between those two brackets, note something special, we're indenting it with tabs. <laughs> so all of the code inside of these brackets gets indented. That's why our tab space makes a difference. If we, oops, if we only had two, then it would be a smaller indent, harder to see. But we've got four spaces, and indeed you don't use spaces, just use a tab and that will tab it in. If we need to tab it in again, use a tab. If we have to tab it out, we go shift tab, shift tab, 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 shift tab. Okay, good. <laughs> so uh, basically what we're saying is that all of the code inside of those squiggly brackets, we call them squiggly brackets, or braces, squiggly brackets will run, all that code will run when our frame is ready. And I think that's a good place to leave it. Oh, what excitement is coming next? What is the code that is going to run? What does Zog mean? What, do, you know, here's our stage. Finally, we get our stage. How can we make that circle? All that kind of stuff you can look forward to in the next um, creative coding where you can learn JavaScript with, uh, with Dr. Abstract. Isn't this exciting? I'm really, really excited. I hope you are looking forward to the next lesson on coding in JavaScript. And shall we leave you with that little surprise there at the end of me dancing? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'll show it to you once more. I don't know if I'm gonna show it every, every time at the end, but here it goes. <laughs>